Well, first of all, congratulations to each and every one of you uh, who found your way through the Dallas Marathon this morning. Um, how many of us actually knew that there was a Dallas Marathon this morning? I, I didn't. Had a great surprise. Um, and um, uh, we are so grateful that uh, we are able to, you know, sometimes God opens a way when there seems to be no other way. Right, Reverend Michael? I know that uh, Reverend Michael got uh, caught off this morning, but uh, Inward opened up and we all got here. And so what a, what a great joy. We've been celebrating over the these last few weeks, this sense of Advent, this sense of waiting, this sense of anticipating. But we've also been reminding ourselves that Christmas really is a season of joy and hope and peace and love. Uh, it's a season when we come together as the people of God to be reminded of the Advent, the birth of Christ, that not only happened 2,000 years ago, but happens every time that we make the conscious decision to be dwellers of goodness and hope in this world. It really is that advent of a Christ who came 2,000 years ago to bring good news and comes to us this day through our own bodies, through our own living experience, to bring good news to the world. We've been reminded that Christmas is not our birthday. Even though the 25th of December may be somebody's birthday in the congregation this morning, Christmas is a reminder of the birth of Jesus. And we still want to celebrate your birthday on the 25th of December, but Christmas is really about the advent of Christ, the Christ that gets born in us each and every day, the Christ that is living in us, the Christ who is born in us, the Christ that is revealed through us. And it's in that celebration that we come together as the people of God in this particular season to be reminded that we are part of the solution of the world not just the solution for the world 2,000 years ago, but that we are part of the solution for the world today. A world that is in need of hope, a world that is in need of joy, a world that is in need of love, and the world that is in need of the peacemaker that came in Jesus. Today we come to give up on perfect. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not easy. Many of us in uh, corporate America or perhaps even in nonprofits know that we like to do things perfectly. Many of us like to have the perfect Christmas. Many of us see this season as an opportunity to, to, to find some perfection in our lives. And yet, in the story of Christmas, it seems as though God gave up on perfect God's self. Here we are in this story of, of Mary. Now, if, if I was God, and I'm not... If I was God, and, and, and if I was thinking about this story and how uh, the child of Bethlehem was to be brought into the world, I think I might have had a very different strategic plan than God did. I think that I would have had a very different experience of, of who was chosen to be the bearer of the good news in Mary. I think I would have had a different scenario about traveling to Bethlehem on the back of a donkey at nine months pregnant. Any of you who have been pregnant know that riding on the back of a donkey is probably not the best thing to be doing. <laughs> I think I probably would have had a different strategic plan about when I got to Bethlehem, thinking ahead and perhaps making reservations. <laughs> Travelocity was not around in those days. I think I would have probably had a different strategic plan about where the birth was to take place and who was present. I'm not sure that cows and sheep and all of those sorts of things would have been perhaps the most cleanliness of, uh, of experiences. There would have been a maternity hospital somewhere around. Giving up on perfect. The story that reveals Jesus into the world is a less than perfect scenario, less than perfect experience. And I certainly would have been thinking about what I would have been doing in those days as we were arriving and thinking about the Magi that might be arriving from the East at some point in the Christmas story. Giving up on perfect. And yet each and every one of us in our experiences in this day seem to believe that everything about life, everything about our circumstances, everything about the plan of God has to be perfect in order for God to be involved. The story of Mary reminds us that God takes all of our circumstances of lives and finds perfection in the messiness of our existence. 
The whole premise of living a faithful life is one that dwells with God in the midst of it all. That means that wherever we are in life's story, wherever we are in our own experience this day, that we have to look for the evidence of Christ within it. We have to look for the evidence of the Holy Spirit as the one who is creating all things together for good for those who love God. It means that even when we think that God is not involved in our lives, we are called beyond ourselves to see the miracle of Christmas, the miracle of Christ, the miracle of the Holy in the midst of it all, in the midst of the messiness of the story. Even for Mary, Imagine this young woman who had been heard about the prophecies of a Messiah coming to the world. A Mary who perhaps from her mother was taught the traditions of prophecy that one of the children of Israel would give birth to this child. Mary who perhaps prayed in the synagogues with the other women, let it be me. And Mary, who in the midst of all of this had a dream, had a vision of an angel appearing to her. And then poor Mary, who has to go and reveal this truth to others, specifically to Joseph, <laughs> who I'm sure was a little suspicious about whether an angel had really visited her. Oh, you're going to give birth to a son, Emmanuel, God with us, who will save the world. Yes, really. <laughs> a less than perfect scenario, and yet, as we look back through the story of Christmas, we see perfection within it. Even sometimes the carols that we sing on Christmas are less than perfect. I sometimes have to ignore the theology of Christmas carols my favorite Christmas carol, Mary, Did You Know? Well, of course she knew. <laughs> An angel of the Lord had come to her before she gave birth. If we knew what was to befall us, if we were able to see our life's plan and our purpose, if we were able to see the prophecy of Christ in our lives, we ask ourselves, would we really be followers of Jesus? Would we really, like Mary, say yes? Would we really, like Joseph, find ourselves in a situation that, that sent them outside of their own community that would mean that they would have to uh, find refuge in a stable, that they would have to leave their homes and their neighbors and their friends for fear that Jesus would be found after his birth? Would we give up our social standing? Would we give up our own existence in order to follow Jesus? Would we rather have a God who just wants us to have a perfect life or would we be like Mary and Joseph? Would we be like those who are called to follow Jesus and enter into the messiness of the drama of life and allow our faith to believe that somehow God will make perfect all things as they come together for good for those who love God? You know, sometimes I follow your lives on Facebook. I'm one of your Facebook stalkers. And just recently, Marvin Matthews came out because he's getting married on New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve! <laughs> now, now, I think he's getting married on New Year's Eve because he wants to sing that song, Where Will You Be on New Year's Eve? <laughs> Marvin's getting married. Now, Marvin has been part of the evangelical church for many, many years and has sung in many, many large evangelical congregations and has brought his gift of music. And I want to be honest with you, Marvin, I think that took great courage to be able to post on Facebook to all of your friends that you're getting married because I know the consequences of what you just did. Many of you who follow Marvin will know that many of the churches that he has sung at recently have said and canceled his concerts for Christmas because they could not have someone who is now open about his sexuality, as if they didn't know before. <laughs> I 
girl, really? <laughs> Perhaps I'm not doing your wedding now, I don't know, but... Uh, You see, stepping into your fullness, stepping into your wholeness, stepping into the trust of a God who came to Mary, who came to Marvin, who has come to many of us and invited us into the drama of life, believing that God would take care of us, that God would somehow enter into the messiness with us, the God with us, the Emmanuel, Not perfection, but perfect in God's perfect way. That's what Christmas is all about. That's what it is for each and every one of us to align ourselves with Mary, to be able to say yes to the divine presence of the Holy that lives within us that sometimes makes no sense, and yet, as we look back, makes perfect sense for each and every one of us. We are not called always to have a strategic plan that has everything mapped out for us. Sorry, Dennis. But we are called to live in a way that we believe that the holy is present and that the holy will dwell with us as the holy dwelt with Mary and Joseph all the way to Bethlehem and beyond that somehow God would use the characters of the Christmas story to bring salvation to the world, hope for each and every one of us, and in that we can light the candle of joy even when it makes no sense, even when the messiness feels as if it's overwhelming, that we can still light the candle of joy because joy has come to the world, not just in Jesus, but in each and every one of us that we can celebrate the wholeness of a Christ within us, an Emmanuel, a God who is still speaking and still involved in the world, and invites us this day to dwell amongst it all, with those who agree and with those who disagree, with those who are for us and those who are against us, to dwell in the midst of it so that we can see the transforming power of God transforming every situation, including our own. That's what Advent is about. It's about entering the world as Jesus did, not in a Hyatt somewhere, with reservations made and with a perfect honeymoon outside but a Christ who would enter into the world through the least circumstances in disgrace, and out of that found the beauty of Emmanuel, a joy that lives and breathes within us. I invite us this season of Advent to give up on perfect to give up on having everything laid out so specifically that there is no room for the holy to be present, but rather to live disgracefully so that the holy can find her way amongst us. And in that presence, we see the evidence of God today, just as we see the evidence of God with Mary and with Joseph and the shepherds and the angels, the stable and the manger. If Christ can be born like that, then Christ can be born in us. To God be the glory. Amen.